Hey, what's up, garden friends? How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I am great. I've been playing around with my succulents a little bit and doing some things with them. I think I'm going to repot this one and pull that Echeveria out of there. But as I was going through and examining this guy, or girl, or non-binary friend, whatever makes it happy, I noticed teeny tiny itty bitty little flower buds here on my Othana. And that reminded me, I've wanted to do a video on the Othana Capensis for quite a while, so Let's do that. Let's go ahead, dive on in. This particular piece of Othana, also referred to as Little Pickles, this is actually a clipping I took from a different plant and I stuck it in here when I planted these up. I planted these up in a separate video. Very easy to propagate though. But let's go look at the big plant that I took it from. I say let's. Nobody, nobody's here with me. I mean, y'all are here in spirit with me, but you know what I mean. Who, who am I talking to? Oh, here is the original plant, the hanging basket that I pulled all of my others from. I didn't end up leaving very much in here, but right there, I wanted to come over just because it saves me having to type it out on the screen, because, you know, lazy. Lasana Capensis Ruby Necklace, zones 9 to 11, sun to part shade. So there's the basics. So originally, this was full of plants that they were about probably to the bottom of the pot when I got it. And as you can see, I have removed most and they ended up over here in this planter. Pardon the lighting, by the way. It's I tried filming this during the day when there was more natural light, but the sun was like straight into the lens. It didn't work. So my bad. Sorry. But over the summer, I planted up this clamshell. I have the Senecio in the back. I thought it was fun. It looks kind of like coral and it's full of pine needles. Those pine needles, I tell you, they're everywhere. Messy, messy trees. And some Echeverias, which I allowed to bloom for way, way, way too long. And they kind of died out a little bit because they exhausted themselves. But the point is, I just put a few small pieces in here, nothing very big that I divided out from this hanging basket. And then here I am, what, maybe four months later at the most, and just look at it. There's so much growth off of there. They trail all the way from this pot down across the table and are starting to come over the front of the table. So very, very, very vigorous plants, that's for sure. And then over here, you can kind of see a better representation of the flowers. I'm sure it's gonna be very hard to get these on camera because they're tiny and they're very, very, very wispy. They have very tiny, dainty little yellow flowers. They're cute, kind of insignificant as far as flowers go. But hey, look, here's another example of how vigorous these plants are. This is a piece that was stuck somewhere else and it still has some roots on it. I could go ahead and have some flexibility get that going again. I probably won't bother because I have so many of them, but it is an option. So the ruby necklace variety of the Othana, the main thing that separates this from the regular Othana capensis or little pickles is that the ruby necklace has a reddish purple tinge to its stems. That's really about it. My Othanas are looking kind of leggy. That's because they weren't getting a ton of sunlight. They don't have to get a ton of sunlight, but their growth characteristics are going to be pretty different if they're not getting bright, bright, bright light. I had just noticed that when this was in full sun, when it was getting a lot of light during the summer months, it was scorching out a little bit. So I moved it into filtered light. It got direct sun for about four hours in the morning, which is pretty decent. Morning sun's very strong. And then it was filtered throughout the rest of the day. Also, the this is a succulent from South Africa. I don't know which region there's like I don't know, nine, maybe even more, maybe a little bit less biomes in South Africa. So saying it's from South Africa is a very broad statement because that's like the Mecca of succulents. And there's a lot of variability in the regions in South Africa. But the main thing, the main point when you're talking about a South African succulent is they tend to be a little bit more dormant during the summer and going to grow more actively during the winter months. So now that things have cooled off, the light has changed a little bit. They went, hey, okay, this is fun. And they're putting out some flowers, starting to do their thing. And they were already doing their thing, even despite their, you know, so-called dormancy that they were in. It wasn't really a true dormancy because they were growing like crazy. But they didn't really start growing like crazy until the nighttime temperatures started to cool a little bit. They don't like temperatures too terribly cold, though. Really, I'd say below 50 is when you could start to see problems if they're wet. Cool and dry is always better than cool and wet with cactus and succulents, really most plants, but there's always exceptions and variability depend on where the plants come from. Overall, it's been a very, very, very easy plant to grow. And I pulled them from this basket. These other succulents weren't in there. I just kind of threw together a little hodgepodge of clippings I had left over from other 
projects just because it made things a lot easier for me when it came to moving the plants inside. But all I did was I lifted the plant, the whole entire thing up out of the pot. And I just used my hands and just popped off the different pieces. I separated them somewhat so you could see the different areas of growth in the pot because there were several in here. And I ended up from this like $18 plant getting several other plants that have been growing phenomenally. I know it looks pretty messy in this particular situation. I wanted it to because they remind me of seaweed. They remind me a lot of a Delosperma, an ice plant. Similar growth habits too, but I'd say much, much, much more vigorous and the flowers are nowhere near as impressive. During the winter months, I'm going to make sure that these get very bright light through a south-facing window. There's that south-facing window. I also have artificial lighting out here as well. And this is when I'm going to be having a more sturdy and stable fertilizing regimen. I'm going to make sure that this gets fertilized uh, about probably just once a month. And I'll be using a tomato fertilizer. I like tomato fertilizers for my cactus and succulents. They have a lot of calcium in it. Helps build strong cell walls in the plants and really good root development. And they have a very decent amount of nitrogen in them as well. It's kind of what I was going for there. They have the nitrogen plus that calcium in there. Helps make your plants grow and be nice and sturdy at the same time. And now that it is in its winter growth, it's technically not winter yet, but it's in its winter growth pattern already. I am watering it just weekly and making sure that I don't let the soil dry out for too terribly long. Whereas during the summer months, I don't really fuss with it, period. I just kind of let it go with the natural weather. Because we have rain where I live. Not a ton during the summertime. It varies. This year we didn't have very much. It gets hit a little bit from some spray from the sprinklers, but they're not growing very actively then. So that's when you don't want to be watering them too heavily, but... I mean, I just kind of treated them like I do my other succulents, and they were totally fine with that. They got watered even though they technically weren't supposed to be, and uh, a lot of growth resulted from that. Indoors, though, I'm not going to let them stay soaking wet for too terribly long, which I think I'd mentioned that's because I don't want them to rot, particularly over here with one like this where I don't have any gravel to create a separation from the top of the soil and the bottom of these plants because that moisture will wick up there. You can start to have some stem rot and some issues with that. Over here, there is, it's hard to, it's grown so crazy inside the shell, you cannot tell, but there was at one point, and there still is, you just, you can't see it. There's a lot of gravel in there, so it's not in contact with that soil. So don't worry about it as much, and this is also a much more shallow planter, so that is going to dry out a little bit more quickly. I'm not going to let them dry out 100% between waterings, which is something I would normally do with cactus and succulents. I let them get pretty darn dry before I water them again. With these guys, no, I'm not really doing them. I'm treating them kind of like a standard house plant, but they're in a very, very, very loose, gritty soil that drains sharply. Sharp drainage means that when that water hits the surface, I want to see it move through pretty much instantaneously. I want that water going right through there. I don't want it to sit and slowly seep in. No, it needs to go right through. That's sharp drainage, and these have that. They have very sharp drainage, so I don't have to worry about them rotting as much. That's one of the reasons in a lot of my succulent videos I kind of emphasize having a really good potting mix with your cactus and succulent that drains really really quickly because it just makes life so much easier when it comes to keeping these alive especially when you move them indoors. You don't have to worry about them as much when you know that your soil's not going to retain a ton of moisture and it gives the freedom, a freedom that I really need and I really appreciate to go ahead and water my plants more liberally because I'm a heavy-handed waterer. I have learned with several of my plants to just leave them alone. Don't touch them, particularly my cactus. Um, the majority of them do not want water during the winter except for like the tropical cactus, like the epiphyllums and schlumbergaras and those things like that. But that's not, that's neither here nor there with these guys. And you can see looking at this guy over here compared to one that was in that last shot, this was just a couple thin strings when I tossed this in here. I went ahead and I removed some very small leaflets from the base of where the plant was, stuck that down in the soil. That's all I did, just took my finger and just pushed it down in there. That's it. Made sure it was nice and secure. Gave it water here and there, mostly to the Echeveria's liking, which is up top, which I'm going to be pulling out shortly in another video because I have a cactus I'm going to put in here that's absolutely adorable. But I'm going to leave the Othana. So if you live someplace where you can keep these in full sun, the foliage will be much closer together, a little bit more compact, and these leaflets are going to be thicker. Whereas here you can see they're further apart. It's basically synonymous with a leggy plant, except that they do just fine with it. Now, down here, this is its newest growth, and this is not ideal. The reason it looks like this is because uh, if you are subscribed and you keep up with my videos, I just moved my plants in about two and a half, three weeks ago, 
and all my little pots were kind of crammed together while I was getting things organized and moved around. It was more just like, I need to get them in and save from the frost because frost, not just frost, is like eight inches of snow. That all came very, very quickly this year. So you can see it, these lighter colored parts down here. That's because they weren't getting very much light at all. So I'm gradually moving it back into stronger light and it'll thicken back out. It'll be fine. I'm not really too worried about that. If they were to be more of a white color, then that would be different. I would just be moving them even more slowly back into light, but I don't think I need to do that. There's enough green in there that they should be okay. They shouldn't have any type of photo oxidation, which is kind of like a plant bleaching out, sort of. I don't think that's going to be an issue here. If I wanted to, which I do, but not in this video, to encourage this to become more full and more bushy, then I would just take my scissors and just go ahead and cut it. That's it. And then take those cuttings, pull off some leaflets, pull these guys off, stick those back in the soil up top, those will start growing, and then it, it will encourage more growth to start coming out from the base of the plant as well. End up with a nice full plant. One of my favorite things about the Othana capensis isn't just the adorable name being Little Pickles. That's about everything I'm finding online says that they're not toxic to your pets, which is fantastic. I have a hard time finding plants that I'm totally safe and secure with with my animals. They haven't messed with it. They leave it alone, which leads me to believe that it in fact probably is toxic. I think that, you know, they can sometimes smell those things. I wasn't really able to find anything online suggesting that it has a high level of toxicity that's harmful. So that's really nice. That's not something I can get with a lot of succulents. So just about everything has something in it that's not good for your pets. So my general rule of thumb is always keep your plants where your pets can't get to them. But, you know, when you're moving several hundred plants, then sometimes that's hard to do. Everything's safe and out of the way now, though. And like I said, the cats, they pretty much stayed away from it. I, I don't remember them being around it, but I gotta tell you, though, one of my cats, he's notorious. He eats everything. He didn't touch these guys. But he's also a cat, and he prefers leafy things like orchids and super, super, super expensive plants. That's neither here nor there. That's just and it's something that annoys me very, very much. And that's also why I have a garage full of plants, because... I don't trust my plants inside with my cat. Just, nope, not doing it. So instead I have my fun little gardening bubble to hang out and garden in during the winter time. And have a good time talking about my plants with my gardening friends. My fellow plant nerds out there. The Othana capensis was a very popular plant this year. I think the growers were really pushing this one out because I've seen pictures posted on Instagram all over the place. People lived all over the country were talking about their Othana, which is pretty cool. I, I like that a lot. They're a really neat, fairly simple and easy to grow plant. I also like the variation. Like I talked about, the more light you give it, the more compact growth and whatnot. I just, and I love anything that propagates easily. That's always something I really appreciate. I like succulents that grow quickly and easily. And honestly, they're just really cute plants. The one I had over there that we were just looking at, I know looks pretty wild and intense. That's what I was going for in that planter, that seashell clam planter. I wanted it to have that seaweed and kind of wild texture to it. I will end up raising that up on something at some point in the next coming weeks. Right now I'm working on lighting and I don't want it up where it could get knocked over or anything like that. As far as this one's concerned, like I mentioned before, I'm going to be potting a cactus into this, which will be in a different video. When I do that, I will probably cut the Othana and spread it around a little bit more up there and into another planter, actually. It's a, it's a whole thing. You can just wait and see. All right, that's going to do it. Easy plant, highly recommend it. I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps the time, helps the channel, makes me overall just feel happy and like I've done a good job and I want to do a good job. So thank you so much for that. Whew, ran out of breath there. Hey, and subscribe as well. Upload multiple times a week and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. I have all my social media linked down below in the description of the video. I'm mostly on Instagram more than anything else and it's just Tropical Plant Party on Instagram. Pretty easy to find me on there. Follow me and I follow you back it's a lot of fun talking to everybody i love seeing everybody's everybody's love seeing everybody's pictures and what you guys have going on in your gardens comment down below let's talk about this plant a little bit like i said it's been pretty popular let me know some tips and tricks different varieties i don't know of a lot of other varieties i'm pretty sure it's just the othana compensus and then the ruby necklace right are there others i really haven't even looked into it to be honest i've done reading on the othana compensus and in that reading i've mostly just seen the regular and then the ruby necklace. All right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, and life is just fantastic. But as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.